right, good day guys. I'm going to do a quick uh, video here, hopefully just a few minutes, on paints, uh, thinning your paints, and additives, and the wet palette. Now it seems like a lot, but it's, it's really not all that much. So I'm doing this because when I first started out, the most frustrating thing that um, I ran across was my paints. How to properly thin them, how not to get them to run. And it wasn't until recently that I really kind of came up with a good solution to uh, to mitigate this. So uh, let's start off first, though, by the palette. So you can buy a wet palette out there. The P3 makes a really good one, which is essentially a sponge inside of a uh, inside of a little basin, um, and you put uh, palette paper, which is essentially parchment paper, not wax paper, but parchment paper, on top of it. Uh, it looks like this. So I can show you. And again, you'd have uh, uh, palette paper that goes on top of here. You fill this up with water, right? And the, uh, the sponge here soaks up the water. And then you put your uh, palette paper on top of it, and then you got a wet palette. It works really, really well. It's probably about 15 bucks or so. Uh, and I do recommend it. However, if you're just getting started and you can't find one, you really don't want to do one, you can just use um, a plate. Anything that's non porous. Uh, this is just an old uh, dish plate here. Um, but. You can't just use this straight, okay? And you can wash this over and over, and it's a good deal. Try not to use plastic for a palette because plastic is porous at the microscopic level, and it will stain, and eventually when you clean it, it scratches, and you can never get it clean again, and just all kinds of issues. Use something not porous porcelain or glass. Now, you can put the paint directly on top of here, but the issue that you have is if you put the paint directly on top of something, it's not porous, okay? And I have my little uh, dollop of paint, you know, that will be like right here. And I put it down and I get it to the right thinning consistency. All right. And I start painting as time goes on. And not a lot of time. We're talking just, you know, a minute or, or, or a few. That water starts to evaporate. And as it evaporates, the consistency of your paint changes. So you have a good flow of paint and your painting line all of a sudden starts to get sticky and it's not holding on uh, as, as well as it did. You have a hard time coming out of the brush and so on and so forth. You have to constantly add water to it, and that means you're constantly messing around with your paint consistency to, uh, to, to get it to where you want it. So to avoid this, you can use a wet palette. Wet palette is basically um, a, a paper that's kind of semi-permeable that draws water up through the paper into the paint on top of it and keeps that a good consistency. So Again, we're just going to build a cheap one here. You use it by, again, you get the plate, something that has a little bit of a lip to it. You don't want something totally flat. You want to have a little lip to it so that water can kind of settle on the bottom. Okay. Then you get yourself a paper towel. Any kind of paper towel will do. Okay. And put it in the bottom. And then go ahead and get some water. I'm going to get some out of my water pot. Uh, that's probably not very clean, but that's okay. Uh, and we're going to pour it on here. You really want to saturate this. You want this to be wet. I mean, wet to the touch. So, you know, wet, wet. And then you get some parchment paper. Again, you can get this at any um, grocery store. Not wax paper, okay? The parchment paper. And I just ripped a piece off here. When you lay it down, you can see here how... Now, you have to be careful because it will roll up on the corners on you, so you just have to be cognizant of that. The wetter it is, the better it's going to stick. Now, you can actually see how um, it's gotten wet, the paper's gotten wet, but believe it or not, as I touch it like this, it's not. It's still dry to the touch. However, if I rub on it a little bit, my finger gets just a little bit damp, and that's exactly what you want, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to come up with one of the worst color paints out there, not particular, and I'm going to use GW here for this. This is Everland Sunset. I'm using GW because a lot of folks out there have GW paints. Uh, other paints, I think, are superior to this, but... We'll use this because it's a good example, not because it's only GW, which is a little bit more of a difficult paint to work with, but because it's also yellow. Okay, so when you uh, obviously you shake it up, um, and you're just going to put some down on your palette. Okay, just like that. Okay, and there, right there, this paint will essentially say this consistency of wetness for a very long time until the water in the paper behind it starts to dry. Okay, and there you have it. There's a wet palette. Um, really nothing more to it than that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about thinning of paint. Okay, now I'm going to do is I'm going to focus in really close uh, to this piece here um, so that we can get it really 
you can get a good shot and I will focus it in for you here but just for a sec what we're gonna do is this is just a uh, little chaos shield and you know it could really be anything but the point I'm trying to make with this is that a little more light in here there we go okay is that uh, just like any detail on these on these miniatures you have these little raised areas that um, delineate the the detail and you have to paint on them obviously um, that's kind of what we do so taking just straight paint here and obviously this was not thinned down with anything any water or anything like that this is just paint uh, straight out of the um, of the pot from GW okay and when we take it here okay, and we start to paint on something Although it's kind of hard to see, the paint's a little sticky. It's it's a little thick. So as I paint, even though I'm kind of doing a little bit of a messy job here, as I paint, I'm kind of more pulling the paint around. It's not really coating anything. It's not flowing very well. I'm kind of pulling it. And then as I paint over, I kind of almost is scraping right down to the plastic. So I get some um, plastic there. Um, and you can see some, you can kind of see the plastic showing through. And then if I come in close here, hopefully the thing will focus. There we go. You can see how I've kind of pulled it around, and it's not a very good thing. I have to do quite a few coats. Now, this is the truth also for yellow. Yellow is kind of a pain in the butt to work with. So um, you would have to do a few coats anyway. But the point is the paint is too thick. It's not flowing. Intricate details can be very difficult to do. Uh, kind of exemplified by if I take just straight paint and I pull it across here, it goops up on you. And as it goops up on you and you try to paint, you're going to get leave brush marks. And brush marks essentially, uh, well, not essentially, they make your model look bad. They make it look pretty cheap. They make it look pretty um, kind of amateur. And if you want to do a good job in painting, you have to get rid of those brush strokes. So it's what most people do, and there's nothing wrong with this. What I've done for a long time is they come in with some water, and they put a little drop of water, and I've even done this myself. You put a little drop of water next to it, and then what you do is you kind of pull away from that water a little bit, and then you mix up your paint to try and get the right consistency. Generally speaking, they say one drop of water for every drop of paint. And when you have a pot like that from GW, it's a little hard to know exactly how much paint you pulled out. So doing a different time, and you'll find this, and I've done this many times. So you say this is all paint, you got all this kind of detail on it, it's all great, and you want to go in here and you want to paint this uh, this tine off to the, to the side here. And I'm going to do this one. It's one of the last steps I'm going to do. So I'm going to come in here and thin down my paint, you know, and I start painting. And I'm trying to get it, and then what happens is it's a little too thin, and the ca natural capillary action of the paint pulls it over the side and starts to run on the side, even if I try and do a neat job. And again, then it's close. Much like that. You can see how it's kind of just going over the side, and wants to focus in on my hand. There we go. All right, so that's what I'm talking about with that. Now, this is a, a problem I faced for such a long time. It's so frustrating to get over, um, but I think I've actually found a solution, and uh, it uh, has worked extremely well for me, and uh, I think it can for you as well. So what I do now, and I have to get some more paint down because I have to thin it with a different uh, substance. So I'll just put a little bit of paint right here. Okay, same thing, yellow. Um, is I made a thinning mix. And I have it in this nice little eyedropper. I have it labeled Mixer, of course. Okay, and what this is, it's essentially 60% um, medium. Now, you can get medium from a lot of different places. Any of your hobby stores are going to have it. Um, it comes in a large bottle. Liquitex makes some. And you want to get the matte medium. Here it is. Matte uh, fluid medium, okay, for acrylic paint. And I, this is a bunch of it. This will last you a heck of a long time. I think this is probably about maybe 10 bucks, something like that. All right. So you get that and you fill that up into your dropper, uh, probably about, uh, like I said, about 60%. Okay. 
And then you're going to uh, go ahead and uh, pop some water in there, and you're going to start adding the uh, water about about 30%. So it's about 10% left. Okay, so you want again 60% of the medium, 30% water, and then you're going to come in with uh, basically flow aid. Uh, this is um, Minotaur's version right here. I'm sorry, drying retard, not flow aid, drying retard. This is uh, Minotaur's. Uh, drying retarder here and again this is not very expensive it comes in a little eyedropper uh, that screws out of here and you just basically fill the rest of it up with here now what you get because you use a acrylic medium see when you uh, put water into these things into the uh, the paints here okay you're changing the chemical dynamics of this paint because now instead of having the uh, surface tension of paint it's going to the more water you put in it, it's going to have more of a surface tension of water. Water has a capillary action that wants to flow into uh, recesses, which is why over here on the side, and you can see as this is dried now, it's really kind of gone all over the place. Hopefully you can see that. It's flowed all over the place here off the side and it looks kind of messy. Um, Sometimes and many times, paint you have to thin it down enough, and you get to a point where you actually hit where the water is 50 50 percent with the acrylic medium, it's already in the paint, and it starts to act like water instead of paint. And not only that, but you start to kind of thin out the, the, the pigment in there, so on and so forth. Using this, it does a few things. Uh, first of all, the uh, drying retire helps with the flow of paint and helps it so it doesn't dry so quickly. On, on the model, um, with this little bit, it's not going to really act as much as retarder as it keep your paints wet for a long time. Although, well, just a little bit, but it really helps with the flow. You can replace this, as I kind of uh, stumbled in before, with flow aid. Okay, the big thing is the acrylic medium um, suspends the uh, pigments in what they came in, which is an acrylic medium. So you're not really uh, changing the chemical dynamics of the paint. Uh, you need a little water in here because acrylic medium is pretty thick, so that's why you put some water in here. But again, the ratio is only about 30%, so it's almost you know a third of a drop for every drop of paint instead of one to one. Um, if you cut your, you don't need a lot of this. If you cut it really, really small, the little tip on here, you can kind of get less than a drop out. And I found you really don't even need a drop. So as I put that little bit right there, I'm gonna pick it up and come in here. And you're just going to mix the paint around until it's kind of all of a sudden changes from that kind of gloppy, uh, uh, you know, inconsistent uh, type of paint when it comes right out of the pot into something that kind of moves around far more uh, fluid, fluidly. Not sure exactly what the adjective would be there. Okay, you do have to be a little bit careful. Now, this does two things, and I'll do right down here as I paint. You can see and I'll bring it a little bit closer, that it flows a lot better on the model and get much better coverage. The other thing is as I come up here and I do this time, even though my brush is quite loaded up with paint, up first here, the uh, little piece that I did down there, you can see, is it camera struggles to figure out what the hell's going on. There it goes, finally. You can see, and again, it's still drying, but it's a much thicker coverage. And then as I try and rotate here on the little up arrow, this one over here, you don't have any runoff. No capillary action has happened, so the paint has stayed on the detail portion, not run all over the place. And again, with yellow, you probably have to come in here and do second coat for everything. But I just want to show you because you, yellow is notoriously bad for coating. And you can see here, which I use a standard amount of paint, that you have pretty decent coverage even with yellow. Far more than you have with the other ones. And then even though that's still dry, when it does dry, you'll find that it is even um, a nice even coat. Uh, even with a brush, you don't need to airbrush everything. So, uh, especially when you're doing big flat surfaces like on a shield here, and you want to get a nice uh, matte coat and not have a lot of issues with brush strokes, uh, you want to use the stuff. So, again, it's acrylic medium, 60%. 
Okay, flow aid or drying retarder, either one will work. I like retarder better, about 30%, I'm sorry, 10%, and then the last 30% uh, filled with water. So I hope that helps, guys. I know it's a little bit of a long video, but try this out. Try out this wet palette and, and try this uh, this mix right here. And um, believe me, you're going you're gonna to be thanking me uh, that you found out about this because it's really going to change so much, and you're not going to be frustrated over the way your paint flows anymore. Uh, any of that, and uh, it, it's it's really going to do great things for you and 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 your hobby. All right, take care.